Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name's Em and today we are going to do a short but sweet audit of my Libra FM TBR. I have a series on my channel called Wheel of Doom Picks My Audiobook and through that series I am trying to whittle down my extensive back catalog of audiobooks. I have been a bookseller for a really long time. Well, I was a bookseller for about four or five years and then I've been the social media manager for an independent bookstore. And so I have a lot of books on my Libro FM account and I am trying desperately to narrow it down a little bit and what I have learned through doing Wheel of Doom, I believe I'm going to be doing episode six at the end of the month, is that my reading taste has changed, which shouldn't be a shock to anybody, but sometimes, sometimes it takes me by surprise. And what I was interested in reading in 2018 is maybe not what I'm interested in reading today. So we are going to go through my September tags on my Libro FM account together and we're going to see what I'm still interested in reading, what I'm still interested in listening to, and what is just not appealing to me anymore as a reader. And we're going to archive what I'm no longer interested in and um, it'll give you a little preview of what might get read for Wheel of Doom at the end of the month and what I just have decided is no longer of interest to me. Welcome, let's just dive right in. Every month Libro FM has their advanced listening copies that they send out to booksellers and you get to pick what you want to download and what you're interested in. And I got this great suggestion from a friend a couple of years ago because you can add tags to different audiobooks and that's how you create different folders on Libro FM. And so I started tagging the books I downloaded for that month. So all my September books are together. Now, when I did this, I made a September backlist tag and then a September ALC tag. And so everything from last year and this year is in the regular September. And then everything prior to 2023 went into the backlist. So we're going to go through the backlist first which isn't the longest I have. It's only 15 books, which I think there's another month where it's 25. And you'll be able to see what I've already read and what is still available. So I've read Cloud Cuckoo Land and I loved it. I gave it five stars. Cog is middle grade sci-fi. I am still interested in that. Making Love with the Land, I believe is nonfiction. I am still interested in that. Monsters Born and Made. I don't know what this is. <laughs> I have zero memory of this. I don't even know if I've seen it anywhere. So we can go and read. You swim with monsters. These people cannot scare you. So this is, looks like it's YA. I like that it's an ocean world. That could be fun. It also looks like it has a competition. I am very much into those things. South Asian inspired fantasy debut. Okay, I think I will keep this one because there were some buzzwords that I found interesting. So that one will say, Ithaca, I am going to archive. I'm just not into Greek mythology. And you know, when this came out in 2022, okay, so it's actually not even that old. Anyways, I had liked Circe and I think in liking Circe, I convinced myself that maybe I was a Greek retelling girly, um, but I'm not. <laughs> I'm good. I don't, I don't need to keep reading stories and I'm really not interested in reading from Penelope's point of view. Um, Before We Were Trans, uh, that is nonfiction. I do want to keep that. Certain Dark Things by Silvia Moreno Garcia. I believe that's her vampire book and I am interested in that. Iron Widow by Shirin J. Zhao. Okay. Um, am I interested? I don't know. I am really on the fence with whether or not I will like this book and if I even want to go there I I want to support this author because I like them as a person but I have seen the content warnings for this book I've watched so many reviews of this book I don't think this book is going to be for me I think it's going to be a a lot grimmer than I like books to be but I'm not sure if I'm willing I just don't know I just don't know. So I guess maybe we'll read it. We'll keep it on the list. 
because really I think the only way I'm going to know is if I try to read it. So we'll leave it. Harlem Shuffle will leave because I really like Colson Whitehead. More Do by Alex Febby. Has anybody read this? Because this series will come across my radar every once in a while and I think the cover art is really striking and I'm interested. I'm gonna leave it but because I'm interested. Uh, Frankly in Love by David Yoon. I am going to leave because I do want to read this one. Okay, Cursed by Thomas Wheeler. We're going to look at this one too. I don't know why I grabbed this one at all. Ugh, it's an Arthurian retelling. Okay, so this is a retelling of the Lady of the Lake from King Arthur. I don't think I'm interested in this. I think I probably got it because I liked the cover, but... I don't need, I don't think I need another King Arthur retelling. I think I'm good. We're going to archive that. All right. Yale Needs Women. That is nonfiction. We're going to keep that. Uh, Dominicana by Angie Cruz. I think I'll keep that one too. I remember hearing really good things. And My Jasper June by Laurel Snyder. This is middle grade. I don't think I'm interested in this. Yeah, I think I'm good. I don't need, that. I don't need to read that. Uh, not that there's anything, you know, egregious. I'm just not interested. So that took us down to 12. That is good. 12 is good. 12 is a good number for me. 12 seems really doable. 15 felt a little overwhelming. So that's the backlist. So now we're going to go into my September current list. So these will be audiobooks from this year and last year because the September ALC list did already come out and I did already snag the titles that I was interested in. I usually go through the ALC list twice. I'll go through at the beginning of the month when they first release it and grab the audiobooks for books that I'm either anticipating, authors that I've read before, just things that are familiar. And then I'll kind of wait and through the month I'll pay attention to what's being posted about on Bookstagram, what my friends are reading, what I see other content creators on YouTube reading and then I'll go back through at the end and I'll grab any titles that I've seen positive buzz for throughout the month. So this next list is going to be a lot more front list or very recently back list. And this list is a little bit more overwhelming because there's 18 books on this list. Um, so and I think it's in order of most recently added to least recently added so that there won't be much change initially. So the third Gilmore Girl is Kelly Bishop's memoir that's coming out soon. I think next week. I'm really interested in that. The Game's God's Play I'm really excited for. I just read my first Ab Abigail Owen book and I really had a great time so I'm excited that for that. City in the Glass. I love Nevo. Of course I'm going to read her next book. American Rapture by CJ Lead. I am really on the fence about. I've been fascinated by Mayfly but not really ready to dive in and I've recently discovered that I like horror that deals with religious trauma and I think American Rapture could be really good for that very niche interest. A Dark and Drowning Tide by Alison Saft. This is also the title that I picked from Aardvark Book Box this month so I'm excited. The Examiner by Janice Hallett. I am curious to read Janice Hallett and see how I like her. I also let my mom use my Libro FM account so sometimes I'll get books specifically because I think she'll like them and she's a big mystery reader so that's really what Janice Hallett is doing there. Uh, so Thirsty is Rachel Harrison's next release and it's a vampire book. I haven't read Rachel Harrison before but I've heard she does cozy horror and I'm trying to figure out if cozy horror is something that I like. An Academy for Liars. I really love The Year of the Witching by Alexis Henderson. I'm excited for this one. Pumpkin Spice Cafe I think sounds like a good time. I was actually thinking that that one, because I've heard that one has Gilmore Girls vibes, that that might be fun to read in conjunction with the Kelly Bishop memoir. And then September House I've read, Mammoths at the Gate I've read, The Dark Lord's Daughter I've read, After the Forest. Do I want to read this book? I have no idea. I have heard haven't heard anybody read it. I know it's a Hansel and Gretel retelling. I think we know. 
fairy tale retellings are very hit or miss for me. I don't know if I'll like it. I could like it. I can hate it. I have no idea. Do I want to spend almost 14 hours of my life finding out that I like it, whether or not I like it? I don't know. That's a good question. I don't know. We'll have to come back to this one because I, I honestly do not know where I stand. What is my hair doing? I just don't know if I want to read it or not. I think I'll keep it tentatively, but I, I reserve the option to not read it. <laughs> um, the Fraud by Zadie Smith. I am interested in reading Rouge by Mona Awad. I have not read a Mona Awad yet, but I am interested in Rouge. The Vaster Wilds. Again, I haven't read a Lauren Groff yet, but I'm interested in reading a Laura Groff. Lauren Groff is the Vaster Wilds the book to start with. I don't know, but I have it. Um, People Collide by Isle McElroy. Uh, who did I hear talk about this book? I hadn't heard of this author. I think Noelle talked about this author and put this book on my radar. Um, I like that the audiobook is under seven hours, so we're keeping it because that's like ideal. And Illuminations by T. King Fisher. Of course, I'm going to keep because it's T. King Fisher. And Illuminations. I know nothing about. I feel like it's connected to A Wizard's Guide to Defensive Baking, just based on art style for the cover, like set in the same world maybe, but I don't know if that's true or not. But I will definitely read it because it's Tiki Fisher and I'm trying to read all of her stuff. We didn't really make any progress on that. <laughs> we didn't archive anything. I still have 18 books on that list, which means we are going to have, gosh, 30 possibilities for Wheel of Doom in a couple of weeks, which is still overwhelming, but feels also a little bit more manageable. So going forward, if you've been watching Wheel of Doom, going forward, instead of having the big wheel with 290 whatever numbers on it, and then correlating whatever number gets chosen to my Google spreadsheet, Going forward, I'm just going to put all of the 30 titles we just talked about into the wheel and then we'll spin from there. And I think that will be a little bit less overwhelming. I think it'll also help me feel more hyped because looking at both of those lists, there are books I am really excited to read and I really, really want to read. Oh, it's not 18 because I've read some on that list. I know how to do math. So 27. That's better. I'll take it. All right, with that, we're gonna end this little audit of my Libro FM September audiobooks. Uh, if you have a pitch for a book that I archived for why I should add it back, if you've read After the Forest and have an opinion and you think I should archive it or you think I should definitely keep it, let me know because I am going to be debating that one probably the rest of the month. <laughs> and um, if you have read any of those and you feel really strongly about them either way, if you saw something on there that you think I should archive, let me know. Tell me all the things. I'd love to hear them. And if you want to leave an emoji to let me know you're here, let's leave the headphone emoji. And otherwise, like if you liked it, subscribe if you want to, and I'll talk to you all in my next video. Bye!